When I was growing up in South Africa, one of the people who worked for my family's name was Lucas. He was really more of a friend than anything else. He had this wonderful mischievous grin, which was made all the more so by the fact that his top front teeth were missing. And he was always laughing and making me laugh. Lucas supplemented his income by selling the local form of marijuana called dacha. It was very illegal and you could get into terrific trouble if you were caught doing that back then. So imagine my mother's consternation when a policeman arrived at the door and said, Madam, your boy is selling dacha. She said, that is impossible, can't be happening. And he walked into the kitchen and there was my mother and Lucas and he said, I have good information that it's coming right out of this kitchen. All the while, Lucas was staring up at a box on a high shelf with a nervous look. And pretty soon, the policeman decided that there was nothing in that box other than dacha. He said to Lucas, get down the box. And Lucas said to him, listen, I'm not your boy. If you want the box down, you call your boy out of the van and he'll get the box down for you. Well, such rudeness by a black domestic servant to a white police officer in those apartheid days was unheard of. And it was total confirmation to the policeman that there was dacha in the box. He called his fellow from the van, the guy came, the box was hauled down, and there was nothing in it other than light bulbs. The cop, of course, was furious. He realized he'd been gamed and he turned to Lucas and he says, I'll get you next time, and strode out of the house. As soon as he was gone, my mother turned to Lucas and said, Lucas, where is it? So he moved the bread tin that they'd been standing right next to, and there in the hole in the wall was a little brown paper bag. And she said, get rid of it, and I don't want to see it in here again. And to my knowledge, they never did. After a year or two, Lucas left us, very sadly. We began excavation on a swimming pool. And after a lot of questioning, when we saw him becoming sad and gloomy, it turned out that he had had a lifelong dreadful fear of drowning in deep water. And no reassurance on our part that he wouldn't have to go near the pool or clean the pool was any help at all. So we were all sad to see him go. But one thing I learned from that story is that we all carry some hidden adversity inside us, which is why I like the expression, be kinder than is necessary. For everyone you come across during the course of the day is fighting some secret battle.